Hey there, thank you for joining me for today's practice. Welcome to your signature flow class for week two. So we're going to keep building on the practices that we were working on last week. And the, sim the sequence will be similar, but we'll just add a couple more variations and then there'll be some new poses that we'll introduce as well for this week's practice. Remember that you can always stay with our practices, uh, the sequence that we've been working on. You don't have to take the variations. Okay, so make sure you're nice and comfortable and let's make a start in our child's pose. Coming towards the back edge of the mat, big toes together, opening out the knees and walking your hands out. And just to begin with, let's stack one hand on top of the other, resting the forehead down onto the hands and closing down the eyes. Starting to feel into the breathing. Allowing the hips to be heavy. And let's take some time here to revisit our sankalpa or intention. Strengthening our resolve each day that we visit it. Speaking it in the present tense. And then let's start to extend into the breathing. Make it a little bit uh, longer as well as reach those hands forward, pressing the palms of hands down. Slowing down the inhale and slowing down the exhale, pressing down through the palms to reach the hips back down towards the heels. Starting to rotate the, uh, the armpits in towards one another. And then making your way up into your tabletop position. Long through the fingers, having the middle fingers pointing forward, shoulders underneath, uh, shoulders above the, the wrists and coming into your cat cow. Releasing the belly down, tips of the shoulders away from the ears. Take an inhale as you lift the eyes and lift the tailbone. And then as you exhale, curling the other way, tucking the tailbone in, press the mat away, tuck the chin in, then press down through the hands, press down through the shin bones to find a little bit more space there. And then again, inhaling, releasing the belly down. Sternum reaches forward and up, lift the eyes and then exhale, going the other way and just move through just in your own in your own timing, draw the navel in towards the spine as you exhale. And you can keep going for another few rounds. Option here to just turn the fingers in towards the knees, here to open up through the forearms. Same action with the spine. And finishing off your last one, turn the fingers to point forward and taking that right leg back, keep it parallel, lifting the right leg up, lifting that left arm, left arm up. Think about the inner edge of that right leg lifting up. Take an inhale, lift the eyes, arm and leg. Exhale, curl the knee and the elbow in. And then again, inhale, extending everything out. And then exhale, Squeezing it in and again, inhale, extend out and then exhale, squeeze. 
squeezing it in, place the left hand down, reach that right foot back, placing the heel down, left foot comes behind you as you peel open here, taking that right arm up and over the side of the head, palm facing down, press the mat away from you, left shoulder away from the ear, grounding down through the outer edge of that right foot to begin with, and maybe you want to take that right leg up and away from the mat. Take an inhale. And then as you exhale, bring that right leg back down, ground down through the foot. Reach it a little bit further away as you come back upright. And then right hand is light onto this right leg, slide it down. Left arm comes up and over, looking up towards that left arm, coming into your parigasana. Taking an inhale and staying for the exhale. Inhale, coming back upright and then cut all the hands down and fold back in towards your tabletop position. Tuck the toes under, press back into your down facing dog. Taking a breath here in your down dog, sealing down through the inner edges of the hands. Taking another inhale. And exhale, walk your hands back towards your feet, letting the heels drop down, feet parallel, spinal roll all the way up to standing, interlacing the hands at the base of the head, cradling the head, drop the tailbone down, lift the eyes, lift the sternum, inhale, and then exhale, spinal roll down, release the hands, inhale, halfway lift, draw the quadriceps up, exhale, bend the knees to fold and walk your hands back out into your down facing dog. Coming back down into your tabletop position, release the tops of the feet down. Take this left leg back, lifting the left leg up. Think about that inner edge of that left leg lifting up. Right arm extends away. Inhale, lift the leg, lift the right arm. Exhale, squeezing everything in. And again, inhale, extend out. Exhale, squeezing in. And again, inhaling. And exhale, placing that right hand down, extend that left leg back, placing the left foot down as you kickstand that right leg behind you, peeling open this left arm towards the ceiling and then extending it up and over the side of the head. Press down to the knuckles of that right hand, try to lift out of the right wrist, sealing down the outer edge of the left foot. And then option here to extend that left leg up and away from the mat. Taking another inhale. Exhale to place that left foot back down and just step the left foot a little bit further away as you come up to uh, upright, placing the left hand down onto the uh, outside of the left leg, either above or below the knee, and then turning the eyes to look up towards the ceiling just pass that right arm. And then on the next inhale, coming back upright, cut all the hands to fold into your tabletop position. Tuck the toes under, press back into down facing dog. Taking an inhale, exhale, walk your hands back towards your feet, dropping the heels down, spine or all to come up. Interlace the hands at the base of the head here. Inhale, lift the sternum. Little upper back bend, dropping the tailbone down. Exhale, spinal roll down. Release the hands. Inhale, halfway lift, draw the quadriceps up. Exhale, bend the knees to fold. Walk your hands back out into your down facing dog. And then looking towards the hands, just walking the feet up. We're taking one or two big steps towards the top. Take an inhale into your halfway lift and then exhale, fold. Feet can stay hip distance apart or come a little bit closer together, your choice here. And then soften through the knees and take a spinal roll to come all the way up to standing. Arms out to the side, palms, hands come together. Exhale, coming into your Tadasana for a moment, just resting the hands in front of the chest. Let's close down the eyes for a few moments. Connecting the feet with the ground, just grounding down through the feet and then starting to draw the energy up the legs, up and out, 
through the crown of the head. Gently opening up the eyes and releasing the arms down by your side. Let's take our first round here. Take the arms out to the side, inhale, looking up towards the thumbs and then exhale, forward fold into your Uttanasana. Feeling free to bend the knees, letting the head relax down. Inhale, halfway lift, fingertips or shins and then exhale, fold and take that right leg back. Drop the right knee down, release the top of the foot down. Sweeping the arms up into your Anjaneyasana here. Taking an inhale and then exhale to circle the arms back. Bring the hands to frame the front foot. Tuck the back toes under. Lift the knee off. Step back into your plank position. Taking an inhale here. Coming down to the knees. Release the tops of the feet. Elbows point straight back. Releasing down. Hands by the ribs. Either baby cobra or your cobra. Inhale. Exhale to tuck the toes under, press back into your Adha Mukha Svanasana or down facing dog, holding here for three breaths. Steady gaze with the eyes. Rising up into the balls of the feet, take that right leg up into your three-legged dog, keeping a parallel inhale, and then exhale to step it forward in between the hands. Keeping that back knee off now, staying on the fingertips here, just finding your sprinter's lunge, reach the sternum forward, eyes slightly forward, take an inhale. As you exhale, start to straighten this right leg just to where you can. If you need to keep it slightly bent, feel free, draw that right hip crease back and then bending into that front leg, back into your sprinter's lunge and then exhaling into your pyramid. Inhale, sprinter's lunge and then exhale into your pyramid and we'll hold it here for a couple of breaths. If it feels comfortable to pop your hands flat onto the mat, you can do that. Shoulders away from the ears. This is somewhere where you could certainly use your block if you would like to. I'm trying to lift the navel away from the mat. Take one more inhale, staying for the exhale, and then bending into that front leg, shifting the hands slightly forward to Lift that left leg up and then pop it down into your Uttanasana, letting the head relax and then take an inhale, coming all the way back up, Urdhvahastasana, hands together and then exhaling back into your Uttanasana, relax the head down, inhale into your halfway lift, exhale, fold, stepping that left leg back, dropping down to the left knee, release the back toes, taking the arms up into your Anjani Asana here, lifting the eyes, lifting through the belly, inhaling, exhale, circle the hands down to frame the front foot, tuck the back toes under, lifting the knee off, stepping back into your plank pose here, inhaling, exhale, knees down, release the toes, releasing all the way down, hands by the ribs to come into your baby cobra or your cobra, inhaling, Exhaling back into down facing dog. Three breaths. Trying to press down through all ten knuckles of the fingers and then lift away from the hands all the way into the armpits and then into the hips to lengthen out through the entire sides of the body. As you exhale, think about drawing the navel in and up towards the spine. And then rising up onto the balls of feet, take that left leg up into your three-legged dog, inhale, and then exhale, stepping it forward as far forward as you can, coming into your sprinter's lunge, coming into the fingertips here, pressing the back of the right thigh up towards the ceiling. Taking an inhale to hold and then exhale to start to straighten into this front leg just to where you can, lifting that right heel up and then inhale, bend into the front leg, sternum reaches forward, right heel reaches back, exhale, 
to straighten. Inhale. And then exhale, last one here, holding your pyramid just where you can, maybe bring the palms down, using your block if you'd like to. Try to relax the back of the neck, shoulders moving away from the ears. Encouraging that left quadricep to activate, drawing that left kneecap up. And then taking an inhale to bend into that front leg, Shift the hand slightly forward, so you shift the weight to that left leg, lifting the right leg up and then placing that right foot back down. Feet coming together now, if you can, letting the head relax and then press down through the feet, bringing the arms all the way back up, palms, hands come together, exhale, draw them down through the centre line, releasing the hands down by your side. Bend through the knees, sweeping up into your Utkatasana now, arms shoulder distance apart, all palms of the hands together. Taking another in-breath and then exhale, folding down, relaxing the head. Inhale into your halfway lift. Exhale, release and step that right foot back. Come down to the right knee and keep the right toes tucked under here. Reaching the arms up into Anjaniyasana. Taking an inhale and then as you exhale, circle the arms back behind you. We've been working with the hands onto the back of the pelvis. You can repeat that or if you can, interlacing the hands behind the back. Trying to bring the heels of the hands together. Reaching the hands down when you feel ready to do so. Start to shift the pelvis forward, tailbone dropping down, arms moving away from the body. Maybe lifting the sternum, lifting the eyes. Find the breath. Option to keep the arms as they are or bring them down as we move into our Ardha Hanuman. So taking an inhale, as you exhale, start to strain into this front leg, flexing the left foot towards the face. Keep taking the arms away from the body, back of the neck long, left toes up towards the ceiling, draw the navel in. One more full breath. And let's bend into this front leg, releasing those hands to come back into your low lunge to inhale, circle the arms back, framing the front foot, tucking the back toes under or lifting the knee off. Step back into down facing dog, take an inhale and then exhale to come back into your plank position. We're going for our side plank here. You can drop down onto this right knee if that feels better for you and kick stand it out. If you can, rotate to the outside edge of that right foot. Press down through that right hand, either left foot in front or stacking it on top and take that left arm up towards the ceiling, turning the eyes to look to the side or towards that top left hand. Keep breathing. Lifting up through that right side body. One more full breath. And then taking another inhale. And then exhale to bring that left hand down, finding your plank position. Feeling free to come down to the knees or elbows straight back into your chaturanga. And let's release all the way down. Release the tops of feet down. Hands by the ribs. Your option of cobras or if you'd like to come into your up facing dog, lifting the hips off, strengthen through the feet, tips of the shoulders back. Keep reaching that tailbone back in between the feet and eyes can lift slightly up as well. You can either go back via tabletop or lift through the belly to come over the feet into your down facing dog. Find the breath. Try to lift out of the wrists, lifting the hips up. Slow down your breathing. Lifting up under the balls of the feet. Lift that right leg up into your three-legged dog. Inhale. Exhale to step it forward in between the hands. Left heel comes down. Coming up to standing. Inhale, arms out. Exhale, trikunasana. Hand where it works for you, and then lifting the eyes up towards that left thumb. 
feel into the feet. Ground down through the base of the big toe, the little toe of the front foot, and the outer edge of that left foot. And then as you ground down through the feet, thinking about lifting away, reaching that left hand up towards the ceiling. One more full breath. Inhale. Exhale to turn the head to look down towards that right big toe. And then let's bend into this right knee and come up through your warrior two, stepping this left foot out, just about a foot to come straight into your reverse warrior. Left hand line onto that back leg. Keep bending to that front leg. Take an inhale and then exhale to curl the hands down into your Pashvakanasana, forearm down onto a block or onto the inside of that right foot. Eyes looking towards uh, the ceiling. Reach out through the top fingers, feeling that energetic line from the outer edge of the left foot out through the left hand. Stay connected to the breathing. Taking one more inhale, as you exhale, Circle that arm down by your side and then bring it all the way down to the mat. Rotate onto the ball of the left foot, come down onto that left knee, keeping the left toes tucked under. Reaching the arms up into your low lunge for a moment. Bring the palms and hands together and bring them down into the center of the chest. Taking an inhale and then exhale, twisting to the right, hooking that left elbow over the right thigh. Trying to bring the palms and hands to line up with the center of the chest just as much as you can. Either staying here, or if it's available, you can start to lift that back leg off, pressing the back of the left thigh up towards the ceiling. Try to draw that right hip crease back. One more full breath. And then turning to face the front of the mat, release the hands, shifting the weight into that front leg as you lift the left leg up and then release that left foot back into your Uttanasana. Take an inhale into your halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Bend through the knees, sweeping the arms up into your Uttanasana. Straight through the legs, releasing the arms, Tadasana. One more round, bend through the knees. Sweeping up Utkatasana, exhaling Uttanasana, inhaling Ardha Uttanasana, exhale, step that left leg back, drop the left knee down, keep the back toes tucked under, lift the arms up into your Anjaneyasana and then circle the arms back, interlacing the fingers behind the back or place them on the back of the pelvis, reaching those hands down shifting the hips forward, lift through the, the pubic bone and maybe the chest and the eyes. Engage that left glute, try to lift that left hip up. Taking an inhale, option to bring the hands down or keep them where they are as you transition into your Ardha Hanumanasana. Keep the back of the neck long, try to lift the arms away from the back. and then bending into that front leg, release the hands, take an inhale, circle the arms back, frame the front foot, step back into your down facing dog. Inhaling and then exhale forward into your plank position, coming into side plank, Vasistasana, outer edge of that left foot or dropping down to that left knee, foot in front or foot stacking on top and then extending that right arm up towards the ceiling. When you're ready, turning the eyes to look towards that right thumb. Taking one more inhale, exhale, bring that right hand down, finding your plank position, option to drop down to the knees, otherwise inhale, exhale, Chaturanga. Coming all the way down, release the tops of the feet down, hands by the ribs, cobra or up facing dog, draw the shoulder heads back, 
strong through the feet and the legs, eyes forward or slightly up. Inhale, exhale down through the knees or lifting up over the feet into your down facing dog. Steady the breathing and relax the muscles at the base of the neck. One more full breath. Rising up into the balls of the feet. Take that left leg up into your three-legged dog. Inhale. Exhale, stepping it forward in between the hands. Right heel comes down. Coming up to standing. Inhaling. Exhale to lengthen out into your trikonasana. Setting the gaze up towards that top thumb. Once again, connecting with the feet. Base of the big toe and the little toe of that front foot, outer edge of the back foot. Trying to lift away from that bottom hand. Inhaling. Exhale to turn the head to look down towards the left big toe, bend into the left leg, come up through your warrior two to just step that right foot a little bit further back, coming into your reverse warrior. Take an inhale, exhale, cart all the hands down into your variation of Pashvokanasana or side angle. And once again, feeling into that line from the outer edge of that right foot out through the right fingers. Taking an inhale, exhale to circle the arm down by the right side of the body and then turning in to face the mat, rotate onto the ball of the right foot. Knee comes down, keep the toes tucked under, lifting the arms up into Anjaniyasana. Palms of the hands come together, resting in prayer in front of the chest. When you're ready, turning to face the left, hooking that right elbow over the left thigh. Trying to bring the palms, the hands to line up with the centre of the chest. Eyes steady and option here to lift that right leg off. Draw the left hip crease back as you press the back of the right thigh up towards the ceiling. Stay with your breathing. And then let's turn the eyes to look towards the front of the mat, bring the hands down, shift the weight into that left foot, lifting the leg up and popping it back down into your Uttanasana. Let the head relax. Inhale into your halfway lift. And then exhale, fold. Bend through the knees, sweeping up into your Utkatasana. Inhale. And then exhale, releasing the arms down into your Tadasana. Open the feet out, hip distance apart. Hands come to the waist. Take an inhale to grow long through the waist. And then exhale, folding forward into Padangushtasana. First two fingers of the hands taking hold of the big toes, extending out, take an inhale and then exhale, bending the elbows out to the side, lifting the muscles at the base of the neck away from the ears. Feeling free to keep the knees bent here if you need to, or hold onto the legs in a different position. But once you are able to start to straighten the legs, you really want to engage the quadriceps. Try to draw the kneecaps up and shift the weight forward onto the balls of the feet. Steady spot with the eyes. Just letting everything slow down. Take an inhale into your halfway lift, either repeating or taking the hands underneath the feet into your Padahastasana and then exhale to fold once again. Trying to bring the belly down towards the legs, 
And at the same time, as you exhale, you're trying to draw the navel in and up towards the spine. And then let's take an inhale, extending out through the spine, just releasing the hands, just placing the hands down, bending the knees and stepping back into a very short down facing dog, feet together, come down to the knees, release the tops of the feet down and sitting into Vajrasana, which is known as lightning bolt. Cupping that left hand into the right, fingertips lightly touching, closing down the eyes for a few moments. Feeling the length of the spine. It's observing the effects of the practice. And then let's open up the eyes, sitting over to one side, extending the legs out long, flexing through the feet, hands down by your side, coming into your dandasana, pressing the inner edges of the feet forward, try to press the palms of the hands down, chin very slightly tucking in here. And then let's extend the arms out to the side, take an inhale, grow up and then exhale folding forward into your Paschimottanasana, hands to the outer edges of the legs or to the feet or if you'd like to take a pistol grip with the big toes feeling free to go for that variation here. Take another inhale to lengthen up and then exhale folding down towards the legs. Thinking about the belly coming down towards the thighs, drawing the quadriceps up. And then taking an inhale to lengthen through the spine, releasing those hands. Take the hands back about a forearm's distance behind you. Remember, you can take your reverse tabletop position here as a variation, or otherwise lifting the hips up, pressing down through the balls of the feet. And when you're ready, letting the head relax back. Keep lifting the hips up, lifting the sternum up. And then on the next in-breath, bring the head back upright, lowering the hips down, coming all the way back up. Opening the legs out into your Upavishta Konasana now, so your wide-legged pose here. Just to where you can find a position that works for you. And we've been working with the hands coming forward, but initially just taking uh, the hands behind you to try to lift up out of the pelvis. You might do a little bit of walking to get right up there. Option now to take hold of the big toes. If you would like to, feel absolutely free to just take the hands down in front of you, that's completely fine. But if you can, holding onto the big toes, take an inhale to lengthen up and then exhale, starting to come forward to where you can. Stay very active through the legs here. So you're thinking about the belly coming down. If you can, you might start to bring the belly down, the chin forward. Stay with your breath, just wherever you are. And then when you're ready, even if you're still holding your toes, stay there. And then let's take an inhale, coming into your halfway lift again, and then releasing uh, the bind. If you've got the bind, bringing the legs together crossing the legs over, make your way into your tabletop position and then let's come down onto the forearms, elbows shoulder distance apart and interlace the fingers, bring the knees together and the feet together, tuck the toes under and we're coming into our dolphin here. So when you're ready, lifting the hips up, lifting the heels up as high as you can, keep pressing down through the outer edges of the forearms and the hands gazing towards either the tip of the nose or the big toes. And 
Engage the quadriceps. Three more full breaths. And then coming down to the knees, release the tops of feet down, forehead rest down, arms down by your side. Just letting the shoulder girdle spill open here. Bringing the hands underneath the shoulders. Make your way up to a seated position. Sit over to one side. Coming a little bit further down your mat and make sure there's enough room to roll back behind you. Bending the knees up, hands underneath the thighs. Inhale, exhale, rolling all the way down. And then bending the legs up so the heels are nice and close to your sitting bones. Arms down by your side. Just take a few moments here, just lying down on your back. Closing the eyes if you'd like to. And then let's open up the eyes. Taking an inhale as you exhale, peel the spine off the mat, pressing down through the inner edges of the feet. Palms can stay just flat down on the mat or interlace the fingers, creeping up a little bit high on the tips of the shoulders. Gazing towards the navel here. Trying to lift the hips up. Taking one more inhale, lifting the hips up and then releasing those arms and rolling all the way back down. Just taking a moment here, just on your back. And you can repeat that variation of Setha Bandhasana or possibly work with that one-legged variation that we tried last week. Or alternatively, we're going to start to work in towards um, Urva Danyadasana or Backbend. So just feeling free to just work with what you feel is available to you now. So when you're ready, we'll all start together. Arms down by your side, take an inhale. Exhale, rolling up. And either staying here, interlacing the hands, starting to bring that right knee and extending that up and swapping it around when you're ready. Otherwise, if you want to come for a back bend, bring the hands up above the shoulders, fingers pointing down towards the shoulders, keeping those elbows hugging in and then pressing down through the feet, pressing into the hands to come up onto the top of the head initially. Keep squeezing those elbows in, keep grounding down through the base of the big toe. So you might just stay here for today, keep pressing down through the feet. If you'd like to, press into the hands, press into the feet, pressing your hips up towards the ceiling, just holding it here. One more full breath. When you come down, tuck your chin in. Coming all the way down and then everyone rolling down onto your back. And let's open the feet out as wide as the mat. Drop the knees in, arms a little bit away from the body, palms facing up, closing down the eyes. allowing that heart rate to settle back down. And then opening up the eyes, bringing the feet hip distance apart and just bringing the knees in, holding the shins and just for a few moments, giving yourself a little rock from side to side to massage out the lower back. And then placing the feet back down crossing that right leg over the left, hips lift up slightly over to the right, maybe wrapping the right foot underneath, lifting the feet off to drop the legs over to the left, opening that right arm out to the side. And you might take it more on a diagonal line, thinking about a line from the right fingers to that right knee, left, that right hip moving away from the right shoulder. 
Closing the eyes if that feels good. Allowing that right shoulder blade to be heavy. And then inhale, come back through centre, uncross the legs, centre the hips, and let's go the other way. Cross that left leg over, hips slightly towards the left, wrapping that left foot underneath, lift the feet off to drop the legs over to the right. Just opening that left arm out, maybe a bit more on a diagonal line, left shoulder blade heavy. Feeling free to keep the eyes closed. Deep, easy breaths. Take an inhale, bring the legs back through centre, uncrossing the legs. Just centre the hips. And this is where you might take your Viparita Karani and you could use your block underneath your pelvis or a cushion or something if that is better for you. Otherwise, if you would like to give plough a go, then please feel free to come with me. If you do have any neck issues, then I would just avoid this pose. I, yeah, it's just a very tricky one to do and to monitor if you're not in the space with someone. So just take your legs up towards the ceiling if that's better for you. Otherwise, if you want to give plough a go, then please come with me. So feet, feet flat on the mat to begin with. I'm going to lift the legs up. And start to lift the hips up and over. So you want to use your hands to help you bring your legs over the head. And then from here, just very, don't turn your head around as well. Keep your head just looking straight up to the ceiling, creeping up onto the tips of the shoulders and then trying to keep the toes tucked under here. So you can use your hands just to support your lower back. If it's possible, you might be able to release your hands or even interlace the hands behind you. Try to press down through the outer edges of the arms, keep the toes tucked under. Just a few breaths here, not too long. Two more breaths. Everyone bring the hands back to the lower back and starting to just come out and then release the hands down as you roll yourself out of it, placing the feet flat onto the mat. If you're in Viparita Karani, please come out, remove your block if you've got the block. Everyone press down through the feet so you can lift the hips up and place them back down onto the hands, palms are face down, and then extend the legs out long, pointing through the feet, lifting up onto the elbows, squeezing the elbows in underneath the back, and then letting the head Relax back, just opening through the front of the throat here into your Ardha Matsyasana or half fish pose. Pressing down through the backs of the thighs. And here you're gazing towards the uh, in between the eyebrows or you could gaze towards the tip of the nose. Just one more breath. And then in, how to lift the head first, place it back down, bend through the, the legs to lift the hips up, releasing those arms. Just taking a moment here, arms away from the body, feet flat on the mat, closing down the eyes. And then let's bring the soles of the feet together, coming into your Sutta Baddha Konasana, letting the knees drop open. Feeling into the back surface of the body in contact with the mat. The back of the head, backs of the shoulders and the upper back, and back of the pelvis, outer edges of the feet, 
backs of the arms and backs of the hands. Just allowing those points of contact to get a little bit heavier with each exhale. And then when you're ready, starting to extend those legs out long, just moving into your Shavasana, making sure that you're warm enough, making any little adjustments just to make yourself feel comfortable. So with each exhale, allowing the body to get a little bit heavier and a little bit softer. Allowing the muscles of the face to relax. Releasing the jaw, the front of the throat. Soft belly. Whole body letting go. Resting here for the next few minutes. Please feel free to stay resting here. Otherwise, let's start to deepen into the breathing. Slowing down the inhale, filling the whole body. As you exhale, let everything soften. One more time like that, inhaling. And exhaling. Bring some movement into the fingers and the hands and the feet. Bending the legs up one at a time, rolling over onto one side. Let's take a few moments to rest here on the side. And then starting to make your way up to a seated position. Just a comfortable cross legs, hands resting down to the thighs and to the knees, keeping the eyes closed for the last few moments. Feeling into the base of your seat. Just 
entering the whole body, the front side of the body, the back side of the body, the sides of the body, from above and from below. sense of the whole body together. Bring the palms, the hands together into your prayer in front of the chest, bowing the head down towards your hands, acknowledging your effort to come to your mat today. It's been such a pleasure to lead you through this practice. Thank you so much for joining me. Namaste.